Oh, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. So, you know, multiplication, which is repeated addition, or even exponentiation, which is repeated multiplication. But have you ever questioned yourself? Is there repeated exponentiation? So, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to the levels of hyperoperation, or what I like to call the Tower of Hell. <laughs> begin with the zeroth hyper operation known as succession so succession is when a number progresses to the next number on the number line or just simply added with one yeah so it just succeeds the before previous number so the succession is pretty simple to understand next is hyper operation i mean the first level of hyper operation addition Yes, so addition is basically repeated succession. So let's take two numbers, two variables, A and B. A is going to be the first number and B is going to be the second. So A plus B is also equal to A succeeded B times. Yeah, succession A succeeded B times. 1 is added to A B number of times. So addition follows two properties, the commutative and the associative properties, which I, yes, I am going to discuss in this video. So next is the second level of hyperoperation, i.e. multiplication. So multiplication is just repeated addition. So let's take our both variables again, a, so this time it's a times b instead of a plus b. So a times b is equal to a plus a plus a plus a b number of times. Yeah, it's not that confusing to understand. So multiplication also follows the commutative and the associative properties. So the com so now let's just see both these properties. So commutative properties basically. So we can use this for any number of amount. I mean any number of numbers but we'll just going to take two numbers two variables for this case so a plus b is also equal to b plus c or a times b is also equal to b times a yeah so it's not that hard to understand so even if you reverse an equation operation I mean even if you reverse an expression which has addition and multiplication the answer will still be the same so next is the associative property which is basically a plus close brackets plus um, b plus c oh i mean sorry a plus open brackets b plus c close brackets is also equal to open brackets c a plus b close brackets plus c yeah this is on the screen right now just understand it for a while you can pause it it's kind of weird so next is the third level of hyperoperation, i.e. exponentiation. So this is the level of hyperoperation where all chaos starts to unfold, escaping hell. Yeah. So let's begin. So there are two ways in which this hyperoperation can be denoted as. So one is just the first number, which will take A, and B on the top, the top right, to be specific. Or another way, A, 1, up arrow, and B. So, there's going to be something special from now onwards. And for every level of hyperoperation, there will be another up arrow added in the middle of both numbers. So, now it is A plus A, up arrow, B. Next one, it is going to be A, up arrow, and another up arrow, B, and so on. So, a to the power of b is just equal to a times b i mean a times a times a times a b number of times so i guess that was not as hard so next is the fourth hyper operation tetration so from now onwards the results of these hyper operations would be very big they will be practically useless in daily life and life as a whole so tetration is symbolized denoted with a and b i mean so let's take a and b again so the if the base is a 
B would be on the top left. Yeah, it's it's just the other direction like exponentiation. So there's also another way to denote this. A two up arrows and then B. So okay. So okay. Let's now take A integrated to B. So A integrated to B is just A to the power of A to the power of A to the power of A B number of times. So now onwards the results as I told before would be humongous. So for example 3 tetrated to 3 would just be equal to 3 to the power of 3 to the power of 3. Yeah. So which would be equal to 3 to the power of 27 i.e. a number very big or 7.625 trillion. Yeah, it's trillions now onwards. So, you can even say it will eventually become numbers which we can't even find out easily. So, we up to now in this video, we're going to I'm just going to deeply go into uh, five hyper operations only succession, addition, multiplication, and the exponentiation and tetration. But still, hyper operations go on forever onwards, becoming larger and larger every level. Other some other levels include pentation, which is the fifth level, hexation, the sixth, heptation, the seventh, and ciliation, the hundredth. Yeah, because why not? So, these prefixes for these later levels are the same prefixes in those of shapes like pentagons, hexagons, heptagons, ciliagons, etc. You see, the prefixes are basically the same. So, next we are going to see a number, a very big number, which is formed due to these tetration, just these levels of hyper operation. You might have heard it because it's the largest number to be ever used in a operation that means an expression an equation of sorts so this is the graham's number Gra the graham's number something i'll just call it graham so the graham's number is also based off such levels of hyper operations so you see graham's number or g64 is a part of graham sequence his exact name is not the graham sequence but it is still a sequence and i like to call it the graham sequence yeah Okay, so everything starts at G0, which by itself is a very humongous number because it is 3 hexated to the power of 3. Yeah, hexation, the sixth level of hyper operation, a very, very high number. So then it's the next number in the sequence, G1, which is equal to 3 G0 number of up arrows and then 3. Yeah, this number is going to be very big. But just imagine how big the later numbers would be. So G2 is going to be 3, 3, G1 number of apparos and then 3. And then we have Graham. And so it will go on forever. So in the middle there, for G64, there, which is just Graham's number. So Graham's number is 3, G63 number of apparos and then 3. So there are also other levels. So this G sequence, the Graham sequence, goes on forever onwards. So there is G hundred, G G sixty four. That means the G of G sixty four, and then so on. So but these numbers are very large. But what about smaller numbers? Can't there be smaller numbers formed by these equations? Not like thousands, but just less than ten. So, there are only two numbers. So, in the other hand, there are two numbers which give only tiny results compared to those which we just saw. Those numbers are 1 and 2. So, you see, 1 has speciality. Its value is singular, not plural like many other numbers. Just most other numbers or every number except 1 itself. So, due to this, many things are different to 1. So, for example, let's take one hexated to one. It would be done. I mean, the result would only be one. So, this would happen because the fact that only one number is being repeated to the next level of hyper operation. So, leaving only the base, which is one. So, this part is pretty confusing to understand. But 
you should understand it yeah so this fact would not be applied to addition though so for example 1 multiplied to 1 is equal to 1 1 to the power of 1 is equal to 1 1 hexated to 1 is 1 again but 1 plus 1 is the only thing different and 1 succeeded also is different because both of them have the same answer same result 2 yeah so next is another number 2 which we just saw so meanwhile 2 is weird in its own way as well so let's take 2 hexated to 2 so because 2 is the number of numbers in an operation yeah that's kind of everything so this happens so 2 hexated to 2 is equal to 2 pentated to 2 which is equal to 2 tetrated to 2 i.e. 2 to the power of 2 which is 2 times 2 is equal to 2 plus 2 which is eventually going to lead to 4 yes 4 Num and operations which created numbers giga more gigantic than anything which we can use today still can create 4 if we just change both numbers to a simple 2 yeah so that was what we learned today numbers larger than anything to which we can compare a google looks like a small piece of piece of dust compared to 3 tetrated to 4 itself which is a number with 3 trillion digits its value is not 3 trillion the number of digits it has is 3 trillion numbers at this scale are useless in life let alone daily life these numbers are only useful as a conversation starter or something like that so the very thought of any one of these aforementioned numbers is so very hard to be comprehended by our brains it's just so complex intricate but more mind-bogglingly massive after making your brain comprehend such things it is okay to give it a rest so for now